we have completed z parameters or impedance parameters and now we are going to have discussion on y parameters or admittance parameters and in case of z parameters current i1 and current i2 were the independent variables and voltage v1 and voltage v2 were the dependent variables and in case of y parameters v1 and v2 are the independent variables and i1 and i2 are the dependent variables i will write down this point voltage v1 and voltage v2 are the independent variables and current i1 along with current i2 are the dependent variables this means i1 will depend on both v1 and v2 and i2 will also depend on both v1 and v2 therefore we can say that current i1 is the function of the two voltages v1 and v2 and also current i2 will be the function of v1 and v2 and from here we can say that current i1 will depend on voltage v1 according to the parameter y11 and it will also depend on voltage v2 according to the parameter y12 so i1 is equal to y11 v1 plus y12 v2 let's say this is equation number one similarly current i2 is equal to y21 v1 plus y22 v2 let's say this is equation number two remember the two equations they are very important and we are representing the four parameters by y11 y12 y21 and y22 because upon calculation you will find all the four parameters are admittances and we represent admittance by uppercase y therefore we are having y in the representation of all the parameters along with the required subscript now we can easily have the matrix form from the two equations the current matrix which is a 2 by 1 matrix will have the elements i1 and i2 this is our current matrix and this matrix will be equal to the product of 2 by 2 matrix which is the admittance matrix and 2 by 1 matrix which is the voltage matrix the admittance matrix will have the elements y11 y12 y21 and y22 and the voltage matrix will have the elements v1 and v2 so we have the admittance matrix and it is also known as y parameters matrix and we know we represent the current matrix like this and the voltage matrix like this and we will represent the admittance matrix like this so we can say that the current matrix will be equal to the product of admittance matrix and the voltage matrix this is in the case of y parameters now we will find out all the four elements of the admittance matrix and we will start with y11 we can have y11 from equation number one when v2 is equal to zero so y11 is equal to i1 divided by v1 current i1 divided by v1 when voltage v2 is equal to zero now we will name y11 
Here we can see that V2 is equal to 0. This means the output port is short circuited. Therefore, we will write short circuit and then we can see that we have the ratio of current and voltage and ratio of current and voltage is the admittance therefore we will have the admittance which is driving point input admittance why driving point input admittance because here we have i1 divided by v1 i1 and v1 are the parameters of the same port therefore we will write driving point and you can see that it is the admittance of input port therefore we will write input admittance so this is the complete name of y11 and now we will find out y21 y21 will be equal to i2 divided by v1 when v2 is equal to 0 so y21 is equal to current i2 divided by v1 when voltage v2 is equal to 0 and its name will be short circuit because v2 is equal to 0 output port is short circuited and we again have the admittance current divided by voltage is admittance and this time we have forward transfer admittance forward transfer because we have the parameter of output divided by the parameter of input so we have short circuit forward transfer admittance now we will find out parameter y12 we can have parameter y12 from equation number 1 when v1 is equal to 0. So y12 is equal to i1 divided by v2. i1 divided by v2 when v1 is equal to 0. So again we have the condition of short circuit because v1 is equal to 0. So the input port is short circuited and therefore we will write short circuit and then we can see that we have current divided by voltage. So again we have admittance and this time we have reverse transfer admittance because we have parameter of input divided by the parameter of output. So we will have reverse transfer admittance now moving on to the final parameter y22 we can have y22 from equation number two when v1 is equal to zero so y22 is equal to i2 divided by v2 current i2 when divided by v2 along with the condition v1 equal to zero so again we will write down short circuit and then we will have driving point output admittance driving point because we have i2 divided by v2 the parameters are of the same port and the port is output port therefore we will write driving point output admittance so in this way we have obtained all the four parameters And now we will implement our network using the two equations we are having. From the first equation, it is clear that Y11V1 is the current and Y12V2 is also the current. 
because when we are adding them we are getting current i1 is the current so we can say that we are having one kcl equation in which if we assume i1 is the entering current to the node then y11 v1 and y12 v2 are the leaving currents at the same node and we know the fact that v1 is the potential difference between the two terminals of the first port i1 is the current entering the node and when v1 is multiplied by the admittance we will get our second current so this black box is representing the admittance y11 voltage across this admittance is v1 and v1 multiplied to y11 will give us our second current which is v1 y11 now the third current y1 to v2 will be obtained from a dependent current source y dependent current source because v2 is the voltage between these two terminals so the current is depending on the voltage which is present at some other part of the network so this dependent current source will provide us the current y12 v2 so we are done with half portion of the network and we will obtain the remaining half from the equation number 2 i2 is the first current then we have v2 multiplied to y22 v2 is the voltage across this black box and this black box is our admittance y22 so now we have our second current and the third current is provided by the dependent current source which is depending on voltage v1 this voltage y21 v1 so this is the complete network which we have obtained from our two equations so i hope this lecture was clear to you i will end it here see you in the next one